That's our end of that. That's the kind of crap that's come off here. Obviously no flash in there. My god, this is ridiculous. Okay, that ain't breaking. So yeah, we, um, as Alex said, we've loaded the bricks up and we haven't got the steel up yet. Good Monday, yeah. Well, it's not good yet. <laughs> well, it's Monday morning, we're back here. Yeah, it's 9 11 today. Yeah. Um, as, we're back here, so as you uh, as you had the update last time, um, I stripped all that down. Dad finished the back of the extension part, and um, I've just moved it now, but um, we've Already hit a side, you know, it's not Steve and Alex without drama. We need that part of the shirt. I know. Um, but this time, what's happened is, this part is getting, there's a steel going in and then there's going to be a pipe going up, like, around the back. But, um... From the end, it looks like it's a nine inch wall, that. This is single steel. Single. What's doing nothing? I don't know if the one behind it is, but that one, I ain't doing much. You could probably just. If that wasn't attached there, that'd just fall out. Good God. Filming. Yeah. There you go. So it's punched into the wall and then God knows what's gone on there. It's like shrunk and it's moved. I'd leave that in there now, mate, in case any of this brickwork drops. It's supporting it at no. the moment. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, if it does drop that's not there at all. Mm. And it does decide to drop. At least that'll stop it going all the way. Does that enter our question with the lintel in the garage door? Uh, yeah, we should be okay. We've got to go up higher than that anyway. We'll just chop the top off this, this lintel. Leave this in. Because the, 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 the garage door's attached to these bits of 3x2. What a disgrace. This is nothing. This is just a stud. And that downspout goes down into a gully in there. It's like a half arse garage job, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like a corrugated concrete roof. So we'll do about the... Uh that. Well, all that just gets cut off because it needs re redoing anyway, doesn't it? Don't know where that's supposed to go now. <clears throat> so, oh, oh, don't don't take any more off that. That's staining. I thought we were building over it. Yeah, over the top of it. I thought we were building the pillar. No, no pillar. Oh. We're punching into the wall like they've done. <clears throat> we're doing that with our steel. Right. But higher up. So what we need to do is get um, get our scaffold set up, get this brickwork knocked off. At least we know we can take that down, take this out, and just take the top off this wooden lintel, and we can go above with our. Because we need to build this up, this up, and get our steel on top. We've got a small steel with a lip on it for a nine-inch wall. So that single we're going to build is, is a double um, solid wall, nine-inch. We're going more up towards the lintel height of the house. So we are staying now. So what we'll do is we'll get the scaffold set up and start taking this brickwork down and chuck it on that big pile of...
since this house has been altered so many times and badly. Um, the, uh, I've got the laser out and we're just using this pure laser datum. Yeah, two meters of plastic and it's level into the house so the porch DPC is the same as the house so we want our garage door to be minimum the same height as that lintel so we spin it to the back our lintel is lower at the back because the small of the small door that was made to measure for the hole this lintel Camera works one handed. So this lintel is 1560 above our datum. I'm pretty sure this goes at least two courses higher. Yeah, are on. Please review film for me, please. So the back lintel is 1560 above the laser. The laser doesn't matter where it is, it's just a datum line to measure. So, this lintel is... ...1600. So that's only 40mm higher than that in there. Up there. Which is a bit weird. But anyway. I think what we'll go for is that height the or maybe one higher so the lintel height to match that gives a six seven foot two garage door for seven seven foot is quite a decent sized door so we a little there but we've got a steel to go in there and the steel, which where the roof, the steel might need chopping off on the end of you know what I mean? Because the steel, because the upturns on the steel, mm. it's all hard to work out. But what we'll, we'll just have to put it in, and if it needs cutting, we'll have to cut it off in situ when we come back and piece up the the pikes. Because all we can do is put the pikes up completely rough, not put any cuts on. All the cuts are set right back, so that when the roof's done, we can just come on and piece it all up instead of knocking stuff off. It's got a weird pillar that sticks out. So this, this under mill isn't part of the garage, that's the part of the garage here. So we'll have to build it around otherwise it'll be strange. Again, there's no drawings or anything so it's on us. I can't believe that. That's horrendous that. That's the kind of crap that's come off here. Plus the tree, a big bush. So I think we've got a bit of a plan now. So we'll get this scaffold up. I think we're going to work to this lintel. Level through with that. So we can leave the, we don't have to touch the timber lintels inside. We can just go straight over the top of them. Which is good. Just keeps everything secure. Makes it easy for us. Less, less demolishing to do. So yeah. Alex is going to start bringing this chest, the scaffold up. I'm going to get my boots on before I drop it on my foot. And we're going to get this knocked down. So back to time lapse where we get sold. There we go. It's 
scaffold up and nice straight flat four planks I wasn't expecting was you see that the reason why that's not falling it is nine inch That'll be sat on that timber lintel on the inside. So it'll be like cantilevering over that. That's why it's not falling over. I need some of the, what would you call that, a bush a tree that's growing over the whole place. That is ridiculous. That's why you shouldn't have stuff growing around your house. We're going to try and get that off there and get this moved. At, le at the very least, chop it off. So we can get in here with our steel and our brickwork, which is going up to the that one. That's our height. So that's the top of our brickwork. Down to well, basically we're mirroring that, which looks a bit ropey at the moment. But like I said, we can't finish it until we get a roof to to pitch it to. The roof is sitting on top of that, and then the top two courses are for the flashing. So the roof comes off, flashing up to the window, all the way across. Um, yeah, so we need to get rid of some of this crap. Not all of it, just so we can get this wall down. And obviously no flashing there. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Just a bit of mortar. Down onto the roof. Luckily, we don't have to mess around with that roof because it's corrugated concrete, but it could be asbestos. So, luckily, we don't have to touch it. And it's all very damp as well, so there'll be no dust coming off that today. So, once Alex gets back, we'll get some tools up and start knocking this down. Make some sense of this so we can um, get ourselves organised, put it back together again. I'll ask them if we can get the steel at one point. Yeah, let's get this thing knocked down. Go on, see if I can pick it up on camera. Is it showing up? I think so. You can certainly hear it. Of course, it's rock hard mortar, isn't it? So they're not popping off in one brick. It takes a bit of smacking, but. Now you're in a bit, start hitting it in, down the wall rather down the wall rather than across the wall. I'll do it in a sec yeah. after this one. Just stop the wall vibration as much. Yeah, that vibration right down to the original garage wall that. Yeah. Yeah. Now down there, this is what we're up against. People say the stuff we found always seems to be really bad. <laughs> oh. Look at that. That's the uh, that's 
just a lintel, timber lintel, with where the main seating is. There's a um, downspout through it, cut through it, and then that downspout goes down to fully down there. So this is coming out, this is coming out, and we're going to put a hole in a bit further up for our steel tail in, and this is coming out probably up to about here. Maybe try and find a bend to put on it to throw it out onto the roof so it still drains away. But this is well looked. So I don't let them grow up yet. Whoa. It's just unbelievable. And then you've got the difference in heights there. So you can get your hands under there. Underneath the brickwork. So it's just cantilevering over the two. And this one here. I don't know what it's attached to, it's not moving, maybe it's mechanically fixed to this one, but yeah, great time, and I'm not liking the look at that, it is forecast a bit of rain today, it still hasn't cooled down yet, so um, yeah, so you have to break, thank you, right, Alex is up there at the moment, just show you from down here, that um, gutter had a piece, where's it gone, it had that, I the lid off a Chinese takeaway and a bin bag on the end of it and then it comes through both lintels like that then through that stud and then you've got this two rotten lintels at different heights different sizes you've got bits of 3 by 2 underneath with a few bits of packers completely botched together and then I'll just show you do you think that's held together with just one big nail? It's, yeah, it's held together with one nail. And there it is. Don't even know. And shot on the um, corner of the pillow that's come down. Oh yeah, and all this just, just came off. It was already loose. All shaking. Yeah. It's not, but it's very, very weak. Probably line more to that. Yeah. So I'm going to clean that off. Uh, probably get the recipe on this uh, nail because I can't get proper leverage to get it out so whatever the thing that does the cutting so I'll get you set up while I do that and then dad's gonna go pick up the steel I think Beautiful craftsmanship. Taped up. Electrical tape. I think there's one more nail. Is it? Now obviously this uh, this needs taken back as well. Shouldn't do. No? No. Oh no, it's coming out a bit, isn't it? The uh... yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be okay. Should the hole go through the lintel? <laughs> there you go. Oh, we got a newspaper. There's your hole. Not much to it. 
So we're ju- so we're just going to do the same for our steel. We're just no, we've got to come hard, and that's so that holes needs breaking up. Oh yeah, yeah, but we're doing the same thing, aren't we? Yes, yeah, so we need to that that timber link. See, see your stud. Mm-hmm. Underneath it. Yeah. It comes to the other piece. That we need to cut the, cut the timber link down there, so we can take it out, and we can break that hole up and form a new hole above it. Okay. Could you uh, grab me the wood blade then, please? Mm-hmm. Obviously, just a quick one. This should be common sense, but if you're changing the blades on anything, if you've got a safety switch, put it on. Otherwise, you might uh, you might crush your finger. I don't know what you're talking about. So, safety on, or if there's no safety, just take the battery out or unplug it. That battery on properly. It is. It's snapped in. Push. So yeah, safety first. The timber blade on because this sits onto the wall at this end. Um, we might have to put a prop under this end, Al, and cut that end off as well. Yeah? Yeah, because the bits of the door have uh, attached to it. Um, that can be left cut back to the stud there, so it's sat on the stud, and then we can um, break up that hole, um, break up that hole and make a new hole above it for the steel. And then this end, we need to break on top of this pillar. So we need to chop that back off the pillar as well. So we're gonna have to go in, there's an acro inside, so put an acro under that for now. It could probably sit on the door frame, there's a door frame at that end. So we'll see, we'll have to, I'll go around the back and have a look. So get that end off first and then. I'll we'll cut it up to that. Yeah, anywhere near that. Just, anywhere, <coughs> even just where the, um, where the hole is, you can get that piece out. I'll cut your back a bit just so you've got room to work. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. I think you hit the stud. Check there's no electrical wires or anything there first. Yeah. Where is it? Have you hit the new metal? Have you hit the door mechanics? I think it's part of the carriage, yeah. Right, well, c- come from underneath and come a lot across a bit towards the middle. That's it, now go back up. Probably nails from underneath it. Hmm? It's probably nailed into the stud underneath. Yeah. And this isn't helping either. No. Okay, that ain't breaking. Hit it up. Hmm? Hit it up. <laughs> From mm. where? <laughs> if you get the bar up there. That'll do. Ah, it's a nail that I was hitting. I'll right, leave it. That, that can stay where it is. Okay. No need to take that out. So we just need to get the, the two bits of brick out now. Got another blade. Pardon? You need the other blade now. You need to disconnect the um, the wire that's there out of the way and take those two bits of brick out. And then we're going to be undermining the lintel, but we should be sitting our steel on top of the porch lintel. Depends if they put one in or not and how far they've gone in with it. That's it, just spin that. Perfect. The door frame's holding the lintel up, this isn't, there's no need to prop anything. Oh, 
Well, there you have it, there's the steel sized hole. There's a lint we've got to try and cut back there. No, don't cut your back, just build around it. Yeah? Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, cut that then. We've got to take, we've got to knock them out as well. Oh, are they coming out too? Yeah, you've got to get some neat brickwork up there, haven't you? You've got to pretend that hole wasn't there. Yeah. So we've got a few of the um, ip stocks in the back we can do that with. Yeah. The tradesmen. And the we're building up the lint on it. And then that's all. The steel, which I'm going to go collect if it's ready in a minute. Yeah. And uh, lintel, lintel's been cut back on both sides. And now that that's passing me scotch, I can uh, get all this polished off so we can get that built back up. Is it is it sitting on this or? It's going above that. Why what, are we just laying like one course of, of um, building the pillar up one more course and two, two, maybe even three, to get it above that that steel, to get it above that timber. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They're rebuilding it. There you go. That's the bricks loaded up for now. It's somewhere on the pallet, but as you can tell, I don't really want to take that stack much higher. <laughs> but um, that'll give us going for a good bit. I was going to put the mix in, but we forgot to take the feb out before Dad came, so I'll uh, I'll get that mix in while he's putting the profile up. I think when Dad comes back with that steel, we'll have a quick lunch and then we'll throw this, throw everything we got at this uh, pike. So I'll catch you then. 22. We've loaded the bricks up and we haven't got the steel up yet. But when Lights loaded the bricks up, the steel was in the steel stockist. But there it is at the end of the drive. That needs to go here. So that pillar's built up. This pillar's built up. That was where the original tin one went in. So we're putting our steel in level with the lintel. Alex is a bit worried because he thought we wouldn't get it done. He thought it was double faced, but it's not. It's faced with block on the back. So there's probably about eight. Two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's twelve block on that pipe, but we're coming higher up with our blocks. So there's probably about 10 block at the most in it and whatever brick it is like I say it's, it's a bit higher in the front because it's um it's a 200 by 100 RSJ with a 8mm plate welder on the bottom for the front for the face work so let's get that up here and get them on top of it Right, half two, not doing too bad. There we go, steel's on. 
pillar's raising up, that bit work's done, which is awkward, but we managed it. It's slightly out of level, but that's up. There's nothing we can do about that. It's already on massive beds, and at that end, it's sat on the house lintel. So the only way to get that down is to chop the end of the lintel off, which means that that porch should be sat on 20, 30 mil of lintel. So um, we just kept it slightly out. It's not a lot out. So um, yeah, we set up basically. We're just trying to get some life back into this mix because um, wet sand. So it's it's done a quick mix. So when it, when you do a quick mix, plasticizer. What the plasticizer is designed to do is trap air. So it's like fairy liquid where you do that in water, it traps bubbles. And when the sand's dead like that, and it's been rained on, all the, all the air's been washed out of it, so it takes twice as long to let you mix, come back to life. All this seems, all this seems to do is just separate, and, and um, it's a bit crap really. You see it's all it's separating. Our mix isn't usually like that, and it's because the sand is wet. Hasn't been covered up properly. Another tip, if ever you get in a sun bag of sand and you've got a pallet handy, put it on a pallet. Otherwise it just sits in its own water and the water just soaks up through the bottom. If it's on a pallet, the water can run through it and it won't soak water off the floor either. Another little tip that makes a mass, massive difference. So I'm gonna, now I'm jointed up and ready to get down, I'm gonna go make myself a brew. Well, that mix that looks not doesn't look so bad now. Yeah. Well, let's get us a bucket full up here, and then we can get cracking. I'll get them, get a piece of um, brick into there, and get tuck points so it's nice and tight. And then another two courses, and we get ready for the first course of block, which um, Alex can send up when we get.
One minute to fall. Happy days. It's built. Just need to get this last bit jointed. A lot more jointed. I'm going to have to cover it because it's raining on it. This is a bit of a bump. I'll go grab the uh, insulation. Plastic. Yeah, it's still in the garage. Yeah. Pointing to do their own. <laughs> and in the end, here, I'll sort that out now. So, yeah, I'll um, switch the camera off now and then Alex can do his little outro when we've tidied up. There you go, that should do it. That's a uh, tidied up this part and the brickwork done with a pretty pretty hefty steel but we got it in not bad that's a very rare day it went our way I think like I said before I think it was this job's way of apologising for breaking us the other, the other day but yeah that was a nice pretty straightforward one all things considered not easy but as you'd hope it, as you'd hope it would go yeah There you go, so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to give us a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel you want to see more, be sure to hit subscribe and tap on that bell so you'll always be notified. Any additional support you want to give, you can give us a super thanks, which isn't necessary, but appreciated. All support is greatly appreciated and helpful for our channel, so thank you. This has been Piking with Steve and Alex, and we'll see you in the next one.